I like to go to the stores and buy food and stuff, but some prices are high. Tonight, help for families struggling with inflation and for dental care. Reaction to the federal budget just ahead. Your local news starts now. This is CBC Winnipeg News. Thank you for joining us. The federal budget is promising transformative investments in Canada's green economy, but there's also spending to help families struggling with inflation and for dental care. A so-called grocery rebate of $234 for individuals and $225 for seniors will be rolled out. And there is also more money for dental care. That's expected to cost $13 billion over the next five years. Up to 9 million Canadians will be eligible. Government estimates suggest roughly 11 million low-income Canadians will qualify for those grocery rebates. People in Winnipeg's North End say the one-time payments won't come close to meeting their needs in this tough economy. Emily Brass has the story. Winnipeg North's one of the poorest federal ridings in Canada, and more people are relying on the Bear Clan Food Bank to get by. The federal grocery rebate could offer them a boost, but is it enough? Waffle is only giving me um, five, $508, 500 for the rent. Leaves me with $8. I can't buy. That's why I have the, uh, the food banks helping me. I never did it before, you know. Richard Joe had lost his job of 24 years and spent five months homeless. If the federal budget goes through, he should get a one-time payment of up to $234. So should Audrey Copley, who's on disability and finds herself at the food bank for the first time in years. I like to go to the stores and buy food and stuff, but some prices are high. With high food costs and high demand, the Bear Clan says it's struggling to keep people fed. We make it stretch. Operations manager Roberta DeLorme says not only have food bills spiked, so have the rents. As a single mother, she says families need more help. Single moms are struggling too. They don't have any other means and they've got to choose. Either they're going to pay the hydro bill or they're going to eat this month. The grocery rebate would give a couple with two children up to $467. DeLorme says the government needs to dig deeper and find long-term solutions. Meanwhile, the food bank will keep stretching to keep people from going hungry. Emily Brass, CBC News, Winnipeg. Well, the provincial politics now, where the gap appears to be closing between the new Democrats and the progressive conservatives. A new probe research poll gives the opposition NDP a six percentage point lead over the governing Tories. The poll was conducted in March on behalf of the Winnipeg Free Press. In December, a probe poll gave the NDP an 11 point lead. Statistically fair, it is all within the margin of error at this point. But we do see what could very well be a trend because it's happening at both ends. The NDP is getting a little bit weaker since our last poll and the Conservatives seem to be picking that up. The margin of error for the poll was 3.1% considered accurate 19 times out of 20. RCMP are investigating the death of a 15-year-old girl in Thompson. Police got a call late last night reporting that the teen had not returned home. She'd left the Thompson Recreational Community Centre grounds earlier in the evening with friends who had all gotten home safely. Her body was found this morning in a dog park off of Baffin Crescent. Temperatures in Thompson overnight dropped to as low as minus 24 degrees. An autopsy will be conducted to determine what killed her. Meantime, Winnipeg police have arrested a man in connection with the death of a 23-year-old woman. Star Alicia Thomas was found with severe injuries during a fire at the Adenac Apartments in the West End. That was back in January. She later died of her injuries. 26-year-old Joey Robertson LaCoy has been charged with second-degree murder. Police believe Thomas and LaCoy knew each other. Three customers of a Manitoba contractor say they did not get what they paid for. Now two are suing the company. The I-team's Caroline Bargut reports. There's a large amount of mold underneath this window. Alexis and Calvin Bruno bought a piece of land in Tyndall, Manitoba in 2021, and with it came a developer. Steve Collins Contracting was signed on to build a home for them to accommodate their 13-year-old daughter who uses a wheelchair to get around. A year into the build, they discovered mold. 
So much so that a building inspector issued two stop work orders on the house till it was removed. Still, Alexis Bruno says it'll always be in the back of her mind. We had an air analysis done and we had uh, two toxic molds along with many other strands of molds in our house. The Brunos aren't the only ones who have issues with this builder. Two lawsuits were filed against Steve Collins contracting this year. In the first one, a Winnipeg man says he paid to have a cabin built at Hillside Beach, but a year later, it's not finished and riddled with deficiencies. Insulation had to be removed. Steve Collins contracting denies the allegations against him and none have been proven in court. The Brunos say they plan to sue the builder, just like two of his other clients who filed lawsuits in court this year. Caroline Bargoot, CBC News, Tyndall. You have a tip for our iTeam. You can email iTeam at cbc.ca or call the confidential tip line at 204-788-3744. A 12-year-old girl in Manitoba is being credited with saving her little brothers when a fire broke out in their basement of their family home earlier this month. So I ran upstairs and I grabbed both of my siblings and my two animals and went out and called 911 right away. I was just bawling my eyes out, super scared because of one of my cats. She was dead already in there, and I thought she could make it out, but she didn't. And, um, yeah, so it was just super scary for me. Emily Newfeld was home alone with her two siblings when fire broke out and quickly sped through their basement. She got her brothers out of the house in time. The family was later told the source of that fire was a plug-in wax warmer that had been too close to a towel. The family says they weren't able to salvage much from the fire and are staying with relatives. All right, let's take a live look at downtown Winnipeg. We're expecting another cold night tonight and windy one tomorrow. Meteorologist John Sauter's forecast is next. This weather update is brought to you by Capital Ford Lincoln. The trade and upgrade event is on now. We did enjoy lots of sunshine here across southern Manitoba while we had a little bit of snow across the north and we'll likely see a little bit of that tomorrow. Uh, Wednesday looking at another little blast of snow that moves through the Thompson area. Amounts will be really light. This is due to a low pressure system in the Arctic kind of drifting down into northern Manitoba. Another sunny day on the way though for the south but it will be a windy day as we head into Wednesday afternoon. You look at the wind field out of the northwest early in the day but it shifts around to the southwest with winds over 40 kilometers per hour for gusts in western Manitoba and more like 35 to 40 here in the Red River Valley and in northwestern Ontario. And again, it will be a southwest wind on Wednesday afternoon. Uh, temperatures getting down into the minus 20s for morning lows. Check out Brandon at minus 24, Kenora at minus 17, Winnipeg at minus 20, and the low minus 20s across the north. But a decent recovery with a decent amount of sunshine on the way for Wednesday afternoon. Even some temperatures that are closer to the freezing mark in northern Manitoba. Uh, you look at uh, temperatures going forward. We've got a minus 3 on Friday back into the sunshine and a plus 2, but a messy plus 2 with some wet snow on Sunday. All right. Thank you, John. That's your late news for this Tuesday. Thank you for being with us. We'll see you again tomorrow at 6 and 11. Have a great night.